Hey everyone, it's Minnie Taz here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to show you how you can send a birthday email to a contact in CDS fields using the flow. So in terms of today's agenda, this is an advanced level topic. I'm going to briefly discuss what people were doing before flow came about, and then I'm going to show you how to do this in flow. So in terms of prior to flow, when I had a look online, there were a number of blog posts and posts in the Dynamics Community Forum site where people explained that they either needed to use custom entities, they also had to use custom workflows, including a scheduled workflow that would run on a daily basis to be able to send that birthday email. And so in Flow, you can do this without any development. All it requires is actions and expressions within the actions and I also needed to get creative which you'll find out about. Okay so I'm going to jump straight into flow and I'll show you what I did to get this working. Okay so I'm going to head over to flow and this is my flow. The trigger is the recurrence action so the interval is set to 1, this is how many times I want it to run, and then the frequency that I've selected is a day, so it's going to run once a day. And then in the events options you can set uh, the time zone and the start time. So just to recap from a previous flow episode, um, flow treats time, date and time as UTC, and so I'm saying that the time zone that I want it to run in is my local time zone of Melbourne, so I'm based in Australia, and then the start time that I'm referencing in here is actually the UTC date and time. So basically, I just grabbed the value from here and I entered it in, in this field. Okay, so then the next step that we're going to do is we're going to use a compose action. So in our compose action, we will write an expression that will convert today's UTC to the local time zone and I'm only going to reference the month and date, I'm not going to reference the year and I'm not going to reference the time because I'm after only the month and the date. So in here we're going to convert from UTC, so that's the expression, and then the other thing that I'm going to reference is the UTC now because it's saying, um, it's asking you for the timestamp. All right, so then the next thing that we're gonna do is we now need to reference the local time zone. And so there's a list of time zones that Microsoft recognizes. So I will provide this link in my blog post. So make sure you go and check out my blog post as well. And we're gonna paste this in here. And as explained, I only want to grab the month and the date and I need my single quotation marks that I forgot to enter in. Okay, so that's my first compose actions. Now in my next step, so I'm going to select the compose action again. We want to split the date and month, the day and month value. So in here, I'm going to name this my split MN and DD. And then in my expression, I want to reference um, the value that's in here. And so I then use the expression of split. And then what we're going to do is reference the output. So this is the output of the action. And then what we're going to do is we're going to split it by um, hyphen. Cool. So that's, that is the split expression that we're going to use. Now the next step is to then set, set the day value. So I'm going to select compose again. And then I'm going to name this to set day. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reference 
my output from this action because I want to grab the day. Now I'm going to pause here briefly. So I'm entering a question mark and then I'm going to enter in the value of one. One? Yes, one. And the reason why I'm doing this is that when when this action has ex executed successfully, it's going to display as an array. How do I explain an array for those of you who are watching that don't know what an array is? Um, an array is a data structure that contains a group of elements to organize data so that um, a related set of values can be easily searched and reference, if that makes sense, yeah. And so in my split mm hyphen dd action, it's going to return um, to two rows with the two values of month and day. And because I'm returning it as month and day, so my first value is month and then my second value is day. And in an array, it starts at zero and then it goes one, two, three, four. So I learned this from John Lee, so shout out to John. When I was going through this, I thought an array starts at one and I was wondering why it wasn't correctly referencing my output when I was testing this flow out. And with the help of John, who kindly pointed me, well, corrected me and saying, actually, an array starts at zero. And I was like, oh, okay. And then when I correctly referenced zero and one, it worked fine. So thank you, John. Okay. And then in my next action, I'm going to do my compose action for month. And so this time we are going to set the month. So then the next step is we can do the list records action. So list records will pretty much identify a list of records in CDS that milk that milk that meet a certain criteria. So that give us our actually a name. Okay, so I selected context, and then the next thing that we want to do is we want to click on hide advanced options and enter your filter query. So it's telling you right away that it's restricted to entries returned by string or by an integer. So keep that in mind. And so what I will now do is reference some O data filter operation. So I'm going to reference the day and then we reference the schema name of the birth date field and in here I'm going to say I want to make sure that the day of the birth date equals the day of my value in this action and then we'll repeat for the month as well. And then the final action that we need to do is pretty much repeat the same for the list of records that this action finds. And that's what we call apply to each. And in here I'm going to reference my list records and then we're going to send an email to the contact. Now there is version 2 of send an email and this gives you a WYSIWYG like style editor. Currently these are the only features that are available so keep that in mind when you are writing up your email. Okay so now let's save our flow. And we'll go ahead and run a test. Okay, so I'm gonna run it from previous runs and I'll show you 
why it's not going to work. All right, so my flow failed. And it failed because the message return says the day function isn't supported. And this is when I had a WTF moment. I was like, why is this not working? Come on, give me a break. <laughs> I was so close, and yet now you're throwing me this message. And this is what I'm going to explain next. Okay, so with Dynamic C6R for CDS, it uses a OData version 4.0. And in here, you can see that date functions are referenced, and so it should be supported, right? But when you actually do a check against the Dynamic C65 API, you'll come across this error. So it's actually not supported at all. So then the other operation that I was able to use is the equal operator. And this is where it's going to reference um, a string value. Okay. So what I had to do was I had to create two new custom fields. So they are single line of text. So in other words, it's a string field and it's setting the values to the day and the month of the birthday whenever the contact is created. And that's done through another flow. So it's similar to what I showed you already, but the difference is my first action, it's grabbing the birth date value from when the contact is created and it's referencing the month and date. And so then I'm spinning it again and I'm setting the values of those two custom fields based on the array generated in here and then it's going to update the record where i'm now referencing my two fields so in here i'm referencing the value in my get day action and then further down i've got one for my get month action as well so then back in our main flow we now need to update the filter query in my list records action and so to do that, we need to reference the schema name of the two custom fields that I created. So the first one is the day. So that one's called day of birth date. And then we're going to use the equal operator. And then we're going to reference the output of my set day compose action. And then we're going to apply the same for the month. And this time, it should now work. All right, so I'm going to hit save. And we're going to do another test run. All right, so let's see if the flow will work this time. Woo! Yes, it does. OK, cool. All right, so this time, what it's done is it's correctly referenced the OData filter query operations that I've entered because those ones are supported. And then um, in terms of the apply to each, it found three records and then it's performing the send email action. So there are a total of three contacts in my CDS instance that have a birthday where the day and month equals day. Now, before we wrap up, I do want to head over back to my slides because I have some final thoughts for you. So in terms of the flow that I showed you today, the assumption is that the contact is in the same time zone that's used in the convert UTC to local time zone action. And in terms of whether this flow would be useful for contacts that are outside of the time zone, probably not. You probably have to think of a way where it would work. And then I haven't tried this with large volumes of data, for example, 100,000 uh, plus records. And then you need to make sure that you schedule the recurrence at an appropriate time, maybe like something like 8 a.m. in the morning or a time, of, a time of your choice. And yeah, that is it today for my WTF episode. I hope this is useful and of value. To, to those of you out there who are wondering whether you can send a birthday email using Flow, I want to give one small shout out to Joel Lindstrom, who is another MVP 
to my community. He's the one that floated this idea across me in terms of whether it is possible and so or not. And yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you haven't heard of my proposition to Will, who's based in the UK, uh, he's part of the TDG community. If I hit 500 subscribers, he's going to do a shepherd's pie demonstration. I will provide that link to the podcast episode in my blog post as well as in the YouTube description if you want to listen to it. And yeah, make sure you follow me on YouTube, Twitter, and I shall see you next time. Make sure you stay tuned. I have another cool episode coming up. All right, bye. Turn up, let's go, let's go.